Hey everybody, it's Lon Saib and we've got another low-cost Android TV device to take a look at. This one is the ONN or ON, which is available exclusively at Walmart. It's running Android TV and it costs only $20 at the time I'm recording this video. We're going to take a closer look at this and what it's all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little device is all about. Now the guts on this one are very similar to the Chromecast with Google TV. It's got an S905 Y2 processor, 2 gigs of RAM, and 8 gigabytes of storage. And the big difference between this one and this one is that the Chromecast supports Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, and the on here does not. You will get 4K out of this, and you will get HDR video out of this, but it does not support those higher-end audio and video standards. And if you have a TV that supports Vision and Atmos, you'll probably want to go with that Chromecast device or... Uh, with a Fire TV Stick 4K, which also supports Atmos and Dolby Vision. But if you're plugging in a basic 4K set or an older 1080p set, and you want that Android functionality, I think this will function quite well, as you'll see in a few minutes. One thing I don't like is that it has the HDMI port on the back and the power port on the front here, and that means you're going to have a wire going into both ends, which makes it hard to put underneath your TV. So you'll want to tuck this behind your TV to keep it and its wires out of sight. It does, of course, support Wi-Fi, but only AC Wi-Fi and not the newer Wi-Fi 6 standard. However, for a $20 device, I think that is perfectly acceptable. When we get into the weeds a bit a little later in the video, I will show you how you can connect Ethernet to this device. So you do have a hardwired option if you want to go down that route. The remote control is your standard Android fare here. You've got your rented real estate at the bottom from a number of services that paid to be here. There's also a couple of services that are installed by default and are mandatory when you get the device first set up. So just be aware of that. A lot of times these things are cheap because somebody pays to supplement the cost and that trade-off is mandatory app installations. You can, though, use this with the Google Assistant. So if you have Google Assistant running your home devices like light bulbs and door locks, you can control things from the remote control here using your television. And we'll demo some of that in a little bit. But pretty basic here and pretty simple to use. So what I'm going to do now is hook it up and we'll see how it works. All right, so we are up and running now at 4K60 on this display. And you can see what your device looks like when you've got all the cables attached to it. You do get an HDMI cable in the box. Performance on this feels pretty good. When you first get it, it's going to feel a little sluggish because it does do a bunch of updates. There's an OS update that it does first, and then you've got all of your apps that will have to get updated as well. Once it settles down, it'll feel pretty good as you're navigating here through all the different menus. I did test a bunch of apps earlier, including Disney Plus here, along with Netflix and a few other streaming services. It was able to put my TV into HDR mode when required, and it will also switch it out of that mode when the video doesn't call for it. It was also able to do HDR with YouTube too. So uh, all in from a media perspective, it works fine, provided again, you don't need Dolby Atmos or Dolby Vision. And I found playback performance even at 4K60 to be just fine. This is a 4K60 file playing back from my YouTube channel. As you can see, we've got no drop frames. Everything is playing back smoothly and the video looks great. And as I mentioned earlier, I also tested HDR on YouTube and that worked fine as well. Now, one of the advantages of Android TV is that it's tied in with the Google ecosystem. So if you're using Google Assistant for your smart home devices, you can access it here. So for example, I can say, show me the garage camera. And what this is gonna do is connect up with my Wise outdoor camera to show me what's going on outside. It does take it a second or two to get going here, so there is a bit of a delay with it. Um, but once it does get up and running, I can listen to and see uh, what is happening, there we go, uh, in my driveway and when my next package is arriving. So I found that it works fine for turning light bulbs on and off. Some of the video playback might be a little hit or miss like you're seeing here, but generally it's able to do most of what a Google Assistant can do, but from your television. Now, one of the other features of these Android TV boxes is that they support Chromecasting. 
So if you're watching something on your phone, you can toss it onto your television just by clicking on this Chromecast icon here and selecting your on device. And what this will do is switch up the uh, Netflix app on the on and I can start playing content from my phone right where I left off. And I'm just gonna switch off of this before the copyright police get to me. Uh, but this is a really neat feature, especially if you're watching something on the road and then you want to immediately pick it up on your television, just hit the button and it will cast over. And you also have device control on the phone. So for example here, if I hit pause on the phone, it will pause the video on screen and then I can uh, start it up again here. And this is a function of the Netflix app in this instance, but there are many other apps like YouTube and Amazon Prime Video that also support the Chromecasting feature. Now you can also pair up Bluetooth game controllers with this because it does have Bluetooth on board. And there's actually a pretty good library of games on the Android TV platform. Uh, this one is called Subdivision Infinity, and it seems to be running okay. I am noticing a little bit of button lag on this one, and that's to be expected with these inexpensive devices and Bluetooth controllers. As you'll see in a few minutes, there are some ways you might be able to improve that a little bit by connecting up USB, but I would not consider this to be a gaming device by any stretch, but there are games that play on it, and it is compatible with game controllers. And if you hop into the Google Play Store, they have a whole gaming section that you can browse through. And the games here are pretty good on this platform, and a lot of them get ported over from phones. And most of the games that you'll find on here will run quite nicely on this, even though it doesn't have very robust hardware specifications. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot benchmark test, we got a score of 591. And this is right within the margin of error of what we saw on the Google Chromecast with Google TV. That's to be expected because the hardware on these devices is pretty close, although the Walmart device is half the price. So if gaming is your objective, this is probably the better of the two, but gaming is not a great experience on either of these. If you're curious, the Fire TV Stick 4K is a little below this one in performance, but the 4K Max Fire TV Stick is a little faster than this one is across some of the components of that test. Now, if you're curious, the game controller we were just playing with is the 8BitDo Pro 2. And I reviewed this a little while back and in full disclosure, 8BitDo provided this to the channel free of charge. Pretty much any game controller that works on an Android device is going to work here. That includes Xbox controllers and PlayStation controllers and a lot of other Bluetooth controllers as well. Again, just don't expect much gaming prowess out of this very low cost device. Now we're gonna pivot here to some more technical topics, but I think for casual users, this is a very good value for an Android TV device. It seems to work very well, the performance is adequate, and you can't beat the price. So if you are really dialed into the Google ecosystem, especially the Google Assistant, and you're looking for something for your television to play back the latest streaming apps, this is a good deal, I think. It's not as robust, of course, as some of the more expensive devices out there, but for basic transportation, it gets the job done quite well. However, on the enthusiast side, there are some things that I'm not crazy about, so let's talk about that now. Now, my biggest gripe on the enthusiast side has to do with Plex. It does not support frame rate switching, resolution switching, or lossless audio pass-through through the HDMI. Those are all things that enthusiast home theater folks are going to want and need. This doesn't do any of it although I did get it to successfully play back 4K HDR movies and switch the TV into HDR mode, but that was pretty much it. And that's my biggest gripe here. If you were looking for a really inexpensive alternative to an NVIDIA Shield, this unfortunately, at least for this kind of usage, is not going to do it. But if you have an HD Home Run device like I do, the HD Home Run Prime, this does support DRM playback. I was able to get HBO to play back through my HD Home Run app here, so that was a good thing. Another cool thing is that my little Ethernet dongle here, this is the Smaze that I bought for a Roku device a little while back, works great on this. So I was able to get Ethernet functioning here. Uh, the USB ports lit up and I was able to attach my keyboard and trackpad to it and then I was able to power it as well through this device. So if you did want to hardwire this for a more reliable connection, 
you can get one of these things and do that and even uh, plug in a few USB devices, maybe even some external storage as well. So that was nice to see that that was supported on here. Now I also installed RetroArch to see how well it does with emulation. We're running with Sonic the Hedgehog here. It runs okay, not the best experience, but I think it can do uh, 8 and 16-bit emulation just fine. You might be able to pull off the PlayStation 1 on this, but you're not going to get far beyond that. But for 20 bucks to get uh, this kind of gaming experience isn't bad, especially when you think about the fact that getting a Raspberry Pi might actually cost a little bit more than this does. So that's kind of a neat thing, but not a great device for emulation enthusiasts. Now this is running with Android 10. As I mentioned, it did get a pretty big update when I first got everything up and running. And apparently that was the second update that's been pushed down to this device. And there is some optimism out there that Walmart is going to have a few more updates in the future, but who knows? It's often hard to make a long-term case for updating on a device that costs so little. However, this apparently follows the Google reference design, so perhaps as long as Google supports the reference design, we will see some updates pushed down to it. And it is a very pure Android experience. They haven't really inserted any Walmart bloatware into this thing. It is just a very basic Android TV device, and I think that's why it performs as nicely as it does. So overall, I think this is a tremendous value at its current $20 price tag. There are some limitations on the home theater side of things, but there are a lot of neat features on this that you often find on devices that cost twice as much or more. And if you're just looking for some basic transportation, even on a 4K television, I think this is definitely something worth taking a look at. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Hot Sauce and Video Games, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Thomas Anfang, Jim Tannis, and Handheld Obsession. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.